Hello everyone, it's me Alexander of course, and today we are doing a very special interview with Kama from Port of Portland. She is the media relations manager, and we're just going to ask her a few questions about how PDX is handling things through the pandemic and those kind of things. So let's get right into it. Okay, um, okay, so our first question. I understand that there were 20 plus million passengers passing through PDX last year. But the, have the passenger numbers fallen at all? You know, they have. Um, we just, we were almost at 20 million. We didn't quite make it there come the end of 2019. We were really hoping to break the 20 million mark in 2020. Clearly, that's not going to happen. Um, we obviously, with the onset of the pandemic, we saw quite a decline in travel numbers. In fact, in April, we were down about 95, 95%. And wow. there was, yeah, there was one day we had about 1,600 people in the airport. So when you think about normally having 52,000, give or take, to have 1,600, it definitely felt empty. That is quite the drop. Yes, <laughs> you said it. Um, and adding on to that, have they started to increase yet or are they still just staying down? Uh, we're seeing a very slow increase. So currently we're at about 70%, um, a 70% drop or rather 30% of what we'd normally see. So it is still a very, very small depressed number compared yeah. to what we're used to seeing. But it is slowly month over month picking up very gradually. That's good to hear. So now into our next question. Besides Alaska, are there any other major airlines that are well known at PDX? Absolutely. Alaska Horizon, which are together known as the Alaska Air Group, they're up on the top with the most number of travelers and the most number of flight operations. Following close on their heels is Southwest Airlines. And then in third place with the number of seats and essentially flights and seats, is Delta Airlines. So those top three carriers make up about 73% of the flights and the seats available at PDX. Wow, 73%. There are also some other carriers. We don't want to forget United, American, JetBlue, uh, Spirit, um, Sun Country, Air Canada. They don't have quite the volume that the others, but they're no less important because each one offers travelers a great destination to fly to yeah. when they're ready. I'm still thinking 73%. I'm like, wow, that's, a, that's so much for just those three airlines. Okay, moving on to our next question. Indianapolis took over PDX as the best airport in the mid-range size. Why do you think this happened? <laughs> well, I, I don't think you can stay on top all the time. Perhaps, you know, you have to you have to be knocked down a notch or two maybe to remind you about all the hard work that you've done to get there in the first place. PDX for travel and leisure anyway was on top for seven years in a row. And what's really important to know about that particular survey is that it's a reader's choice survey. So it's the people who read Travel and Leisure magazine vote for the airport. And I Sounds like in this in this case, Indianapolis just got more votes than PDX. Um, congratulations to Indianapolis. Yay for them. And we'll hope that we have readers voting for us again next year. Yes, we, ve we really want to continue that streak. <laughs> <laughs> and now on to our next question. Cargo is also a quite the large player at PDX. Like when I went plane spotting there a couple months ago, they were just in and out like crazy. But which of the eight has the most movement at PDX? The ones we see most frequently coming and going routinely every single day are UPS and FedEx. And that's probably no surprise when folks look out on the street and see the number of UPS and FedEx drivers coming and going and delivering packages. Um, those packages come from somewhere. Yeah. And um, there are lots of big planes that come in with um, for those two carriers. We are also seeing an uptick in prime air. Um, which is, as one might guess, aircraft being flown in full of products and packages um, that were ordered through Amazon. So, but UPS and FedEx continue to be the top ones. Good to know. Good to know. Okay, so I have to ask you about the carpet. There were some pretty mad people when they decided to start upgrading it. 
So, are, do you think travelers are starting to enjoy it more, or is it still people still trying to warm up to it? Well, the carpet replacement project started in 2015, so it's definitely been a good five plus years that folks have had a chance to become accustomed and get adjusted to the new carpet. We still see people taking pictures of their feet on the new carpet. I think that was a trend that started with when the old one was going away and continues to this day. Um, it's interesting, though, that you ask that because there is still one piece of carpet temporarily in the airport, the old carpet design, and folks have a sense of nostalgia seeing it. And at the same time, the farther we get away from having that old carpet, the fewer people know. So, you know, give it another decade or two and people may not even really remember. What is that? What was that crazy teal colored design? Um, but I think they're taking to the new carpet and really kind of the fun little behind the scenes piece on this is some people don't actually even care what the carpet pattern looks like. They just appreciate having carpet in the airport because it helps make things quieter. You don't have feet and heels click clacking on hard floors or wheels of suitcases rolling. A carpet in the space just lends to a nice, calm, relaxing feel in the airport. And whether the design is teal or whether it's more green, sometimes there's nostalgia for it, but really people appreciate the, the sense of, of calmness that it helps add. Yeah, when I walked in the PDX, I honestly couldn't tell the difference. Like, it's so similar. <laughs> Very similar colors, for sure. Now let's talk about the new concourse, because it looks very, very pretty from the outside. Is Southwest the only airline that is using it as of right now? So Concourse E had an extension to it. Southwest is using all of the new, the six new gates that are in that extension. But the first part of E that you'd actually walk through, the existing part to get through to the new part is still operated by United Airlines. They are still using that space. Air Canada is using that space as well and soon Air Canada will move to the lower level at the far end of Concourse E. Also very good to know. Um, Tillamook has opened in Concourse E and Screen Door, which I'm personally very excited about, has opened into Concourse B. Are there any other exciting eateries that are coming to PDX that you can share? So Jamba Juice also opened on Concourse E, and that was a, a brand that we had in the airport before, and then it went away, and now it came back into Concourse E. So that's exciting for a lot of folks who like those fresh smoothies. And we understand they haven't opened yet, but they're working on building out the space on Concourse E is a establishment called Evergreens, which is like a salad place, a sort of um, create your own salad place. So I think that what we're seeing is a trend of travelers really wanting to eat healthy and on the go. And we see that in the smoothies and the salads. Um, Tillamook has been also, as you noted, just a fantastic addition. And a fun fact for Tillamook, they um, shared with us on opening day that the Tillamook Creamery in Tillamook County, Oregon, out on the coast, and the airport location are the only two places where you can purchase this particular kind of vintage cheddar cheese this called maker's reserve and um and it's the first time in the company's history 111 or 114 year history that they've had this a stat like a, a tillamook market a restaurant outside of the um creamery in tillamook so it's a really exciting adventure and it's a way to bring all of the cheese and ice cream and burgers to people in portland um either as they're leaving the airport or as they're arriving I want to go eat at these places now. I'm getting so hungry. <laughs> okay, what are some unique things that, not like besides eateries, that when someone visits PDX, they will definitely notice? Um, well, a lot of the airport is, you know, if you look at, we talked a little bit about the carpet, you notice some of the different spaces. Um, people like to have the airport reflect the space that they're in. So, one of the amazing things is you can look outside the window many days and see Mount Hood. It's situated right along the river and you can see the river. You can see the, the green trees across the river in Washington. So these are all things that help people feel really good in the space. 
And in addition, I think one of the reasons that we like to think that we continue to win awards, whether it's Travel and Leisure or Condé Nast or um, J.D. Powers even, is the people that work there. And there's really a feeling of a, like a big giant family and a big community and people who are very interested in aviation. They like working there. They like visiting with travelers and they like helping people. And so the combination of all of the space that makes it feel good, the people that work there, and then the types of shops and restaurants that the travelers can visit really gives it that great feeling. And so it's kind of hard to put it down to one thing, but um, those are definitely things that we hear from travelers when they send us notes saying thank you and notes of appreciation. I definitely notice those kind of things when I enter PDX for sure. Now on to our next question. Question: What is the largest plane PDX can accommodate? So this, I love this question. A colleague of mine who used to work in air traffic control and then he worked in airfield operations, I said, I asked him that same question. I said, what is the biggest plane that, that can land here? And he said, well, there, you're asking me a couple of different questions. The biggest plane that could come and visit PDX with regularity and a routine, like have a scheduled flight there is a 747-8. And we actually have one of those. It's a Cafe Pacific cargo freighter that comes um big big beautiful plane it lands and it has all the space to maneuver around the airfield now i've being a person who always says to my colleagues but what if what if there was this a380 flying to seattle and it had to land in portland could that happen and he sort of smiles and laughs and he said yes we could have it land but the wingtips would be so long that every other airplane would have to sort of freeze where they were to make sure that it could get to a gate. And then if we put it at one of the gates at the end of C or at the end of D, nobody else could move around the airfield. So oh. our airfield isn't designed to have one that big come in with any regularity, like you might see in San Francisco or Los Angeles, um, but we can definitely accommodate the 747-8. That it's hard to believe that the 747, it's probably not going to be there for much longer since everyone's starting to phase it out, but a plane that big could fit at PDX, just wow. Yeah. We don't have passenger, passenger service on that, so yeah. maybe, you know, maybe the cargo carriers will continue using those for a while, we'll see. Yeah. yeah. They're and definitely, as I'm sure you've seen one, they're definitely beautiful when they're, they're taking, taking off and landing. landing. Yes, they are, for sure. And now on to our 10th and final question. Are there any interesting stories about PDX that we might not know about? <laughs> wow. So the airport with um, about 10,000, 11,000 employees who have badges and who call the airport work. Um, um, sometimes they spend so much time there. They're like, I spend more time at the airport than at home. <laughs> I'm certain when you get that many people together and it feels like a little city, we have a police department, we have a fire department, we have operations, there have got to be some great stories. I'm, and I'm certain the most popular one that you're familiar with is the D.B. Cooper story. That happened way back in 1971 um, when D.B. Cooper hijacked an airplane from PDX. Now, granted, that was decades ago. And, and since that time... There have definitely been stories of babies being born in the airport, um, family reunions, a lot of military folks coming back through PDX, um, lots of hellos and goodbyes. So I'm certain that if the walls of PDX could talk, they would have some pretty phenomenal stories to tell. They probably would. They probably would. Well, that's all of our questions. So... Thank you so much for letting me do this. Oh, my pleasure. It's great to chat with you. It's great to chat with you, too. Thanks Thank you. Time out of your day. Oh, you, too. Mm -hmm. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.